it's not doubt Flutterflow is one of the best app building tools out there. And it's my personal favorite, if you already know on this channel. But that might be changing very soon. There is another tool that is doing exactly like what Flutterflow is doing with a lot more flexibility and a lot more considerations. I've been using Flutterflow for over three years and I know how like the release cycles, how it always work and the kind of features, like every single feature that is included there. But the way these guys are coming out, it is, it's pretty much strong. Anyways, what comes to today's video, today we are going to be discussing um, a new tool that is out that replicates or I don't want to say copies what Flutterflow does, but that might just be a Flutterflow killer, basically. Let's look at currently. Now, if you head over to the Flutterflow community, you are going to see people ranting a lot regarding uh, the new release and the kind of features that are breaking. So Flutterflow just recently released um, an update with Superbase and whatnot for their uh, November 13 update. And you see here, like over 106 comments. That's people discussing, uh, complaining about features that are breaking and issues that they are facing with the platform from just a simple change somewhere that's going to influence certain things in other directions. Now that has been something that has been recurring. That's always been happening like that with Flutterflow releases. I've noticed that so many times and a lot of people that are active users on the platform, you can attest to that. Now, although Flutterflow does a great job at trying to fix some of these issues or attend to the public, so many cases where you can point out where they did not listen to probably like the community and the suggestions. Like we even removed uh, the, 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 the section where one could suggest like possible features was removed from the community. People are requesting for things. I know they need to make money or whatever things and enterprise solution and whatnot. But if you bring out that aspect of listening to what people want, what then are you building? Again, I love Flutterflow. I love the products. It's my go-to. It's really helpful. And this is a little bit concerning. Now, another point is with their support, right? Flutterflow support, I will not say I've had a very great experience with it. I'm very, very lucky that I am able to like debug certain things like regarding custom code or when I have errors in my, the whole platform itself. But people that are not very technical find it very, very difficult. And when you write uh, support, they can take more than how long to reply and may not be even concrete to that response. Plus, uh, support cannot help you with like external things. If you're trying to use another platform to integrate uh, Flutterfly or facing errors, they really cannot offer um, a huge support in that direction. But overall, support is generally not very, very impressive. You've seen like there's so many places that as we mentioned in the community. I don't know what Flutterflow is doing regarding that. I can go on and list certain things that are, are, are not happening with the platform. Like they'll release a feature and just abandon it like it's dead or something. But people actually use it and people are talking about it. But where is the response? Again, this is me just me pointing out around community problems. You might have your own issues with the platform. But yeah, they are doing a great job. Take for example, when uh, they get notified about a certain things, they can quickly respond about it. One thing that I usually highlight, like when I was doing Flutterflow review, is the ability that, uh, sorry, the way they release the features without any documentation. But these days, they release features with documentation alongside. So they're actually listening to the community, right? There are so many things that Flutterflow is doing to improve, but we can go on like uh, pointing that one after the other, forgetting about the fact that they are a product and this kind of releases or this kind of uh, buggy situation or setbacks are bound to happen, right? So now, why Flutterflow allows you to build, like provides you this platform where you can build and ship to the stores directly. This is amazing. This is game changing and the pricing is reasonably comfortable. I think so for what it allows you to do. This other tool follows the same pattern. It uses Flutter beneath. And one thing it does that I love very, very much is it exposes much more of the code so you can interact with it as compared to what Flutterflow does. Anyways, this is a lot of uh, jibbering. Let me just get through it. In this video, I'm just going to be covering you an overview of that platform. And uh, yeah, you can check it out for yourself. I also happen to like, I've tried certain things with the platform and it's, it's working pretty much as you expect it to. It's still recent. There are a lot of things lacking, but they are making the right moves. That's basically my point. Anyways, let's go head over to noah.dev. This is the platform. It is called Noah, right? This is it. This is your URL. Again, in a quick seconds, let's see what they are saying here in this video or what this video demonstrates.
Yeah, I think uh, I'm losing video quality. Let me see if I can enhance that. Okay. So the coding minutes. I'll go back to recording actions. Anyways, guys, this is the intro video. And here they're advertising as a first app builder for professionals. Again, to uh, it's a build apps that exceed your standards. It's just basically beautiful interface, I'll say. It's very beautiful the way it looks. And you can design UI, you make it responsive, you make your app work by customizing the logic and they export to any platform. Again, it uses Flutter underneath. So create stunning designs, like I think the advertising designs, that's why in that video they say something like it's not only designs. So we have um, use your favorite what back end. It has more functionality to connect to multiple back ends. So here we have, I think this is API. We have um, Firebase, we have Superbase, we have Airtable, we have Google Sheets, right? You have ability to do that. But I think all of these two are just uh, the same way that you can link this thing with uh, an API core. We are going to look at all of that real quick. Yes, you can still code. So somewhere that something is missing, you can inject code and it will still be applied. Now, Flutterflow only has ability for you to write custom code and custom functions so here you can actually write your code to actually perform the logic that you want now no execute you write flutter code for the parts you like to code or if free to choose download the full source code for your app anytime use no again this is very beautiful and they have a desktop app by the way they have a desktop app so that's very very cool you can have access to native uh, functionalities and then you can also be vi this is coming from product is made in berlin apparently and this and some some advertisement that they're making of products that were made with noah one thing i would like to highlight is their roadmap currently after this we're going to look at the pricing currently these are things that they have published authentication with email o2p and google we have new list widget this is what's it like a big deal to them it's like what we have from flutterflow that says uh, generate children something like that advanced api system i love their api tester or their api builder this is very interesting new grid widget uh firewall streams uh, Firestore streams and real-time update. And this is a series of things that are coming. And as you can see, they clearly do not support push notifications right now, whereas Flutterflow does. Again, you can just head over to noah.dev and check out all of these features. So let's talk about pricing. Now, the very base limit, pricing limit for Noah starts at $12 a month. As compared to Flutterflow, as of this moment of, that I'm making this video, which is, um, I think, $30 per month, right? Even though they have the like discounts or whatever thing, as yeah, they both do. But it's Flutterflow is starting at thirty dollars. Again, this is good. This is good investment for uh, your money. You have all the features that are in free. You have code download, APK download, custom domain, and also you can test on local devices like local run and whatnot. So I'm just going to put this pricing side by side. You can see the uh, pricing plan here. I'm going to try to put this side by side. Let's do a head-to-head -head matching, right? So this is a pricing comparison. Now the base model for Noah is at twelve dollar per month, and you have all of this feature. Let me accept all. You can do have access to the full visual editor. You have API integration, manual build for all mobile and web, super base integration, code preview, unlimited code downloads. This Flutterflow doesn't. Uh, Flutterflow has to on their base model like the Pro plan, right? Is it APK downloads? And I think code downloads where they have that on their base model. So the the, the difference is is pretty. Up there although this uh, noah is not yet like advanced as writer flow but for for what they have that they're offering it's, it's pretty much good but one thing is you cannot deploy for uh, noah and you cannot have like this odd reload you cannot use the desktop app under this plan so the comparison plan at this price for 30 dollar this premium that noah has for 29 dollar a month you have access to everything noah desktop and one click deploy to both app store and Google Play Store, hot reload, collaboration, premium support. And this is very, very good. But at this level, Flutterflow doesn't even advertise like um, some of those basic functionalities. On the free plan for Noah, you have access to API groups and whatnot. But for Flutterflow, you have to go on the standard or uh, on the paid plan before you have access to a couple of those things. Again, the head-to-head -head matching, this is, has like a higher offering, although the features may be limited right now. But yeah as compared to when it comes to a monetary value. Anyways, let's head over into the NOAA um, builder interface and see how it looks like. 
So right here, I'm just going to come here. This is where we have our builder app.noah.dev, just like app to flutter flow. So right here, you can just start by creating a new project. So I'm going to create a new project. Again, this is just a walkthrough. If you want me to do a detailed video on how uh, the platform is or how it looks like, how things are, I can do that. And I'm going to call that a demo project. So only small letters, apparently, let me call it like that. And I'm going to create. Now, since I'm on the free plan, I cannot use Luca, right? I cannot download and use the desktop app because I'm on the free plan. But let's wait for the project to be created. All right, so we have our demo project created. And as you can see here, we have this uh, sidebar on both sides, right? On left and right. So we have this here, the outline files, and this is going to show you the files that we have. This outline is just going to show you like the widget tree that we have for Waterflow. And on the right here, you have properties for whatever thing that you, you have to do. Now, Noah has something that I really love, the way it's been done. They call them bots, right? So you can create a new bot here. And bot is just like a way of you grouping your things. Let's say I want my authentication to be on the same board. I'm just going to see like my login, sign up, forgot password or whatever thing on this board. Maybe I want like a booking, a board for booking. So I can rename the board, right? And call it something else. If I want a, another board for something, right? I can do all of that. And that it just helps development like visually. So let's take for example, this board. If you want to add a page here or say a screen, I am going to click here on this uh, screen to see the various screens I can do. Now there are some premium ones I don't have. So I want to do like a basic empty page. This is an empty page. You bring the page here. Page, let me see. I'm calling this home. Again, this is just like something random that we are doing. So we actually see where this page will be located in leap slash that. Now in the files, you are going to see this home dot that that corresponds to this page, right? We can drag and move the page like this. We can configure its properties on the right here. And if we want to add elements into this page, we just have to click here on this elements. You see the list of widgets that Noah has. You see like a bunch of them. Yeah. So you can just check which widget they want to do. Maybe you could want to put a column and they do something. They have the most used ones like this group here they call things like text here that's available that I can use exactly. So I'm just going to add something like a button to my screen so I can click that and the button can roam freely and if I want it inside my screen I can bring it here like just like that so it's not actually inside this my home um, page and out here on outline you can see the hierarchy or our widget tree as we call it now let's go into how you tie actions to if functionalities to your application so here on this particular board or this page itself, you can tie variables like properties that we call like states. You can tie parameters and variables that you are using throughout the application. So if I want to tie something like an action, like any widget that an action can be taken on, definitely has a means for you to go to the back end and then use uh, tie that action. So I'm going to come here like on press. You can see this edit. It's going to open this Noah builder or whatever they call it i want to tie an action to so you can actually write code you can actually see the code that noah gives you and you can see on this unpressed you can actually perform something like uh, print again just like a simple print statement hello so you can edit directly within here i think this is very, very beautiful like you have data and you want to use it instead of going to probably create like a custom action or custom widget and custom widgets have the way they must be. Custom actions have the way they must be. With regard to Flutterflow, you can just type in execute your logic here, right? And this is going to actually do what you want it to, to do. Let's tie another action here, like see their own built-in actions that they have. So you have the Noah under this category, open URL or to do a simple print, show dialog, show date picker. So you can bring up a date picker. You have operations, so you can perform like plus minus and this is an example of uh, simple things that people use every day that flutterflow doesn't have now with flutterflow you can use like code expressions to do this kind of thing or custom functions but just having something as simple like this can help someone who is not very technical to uh, build faster we have statements you can do various things if statements add conditions or whatnot globals give you access to your global properties again this is limited for now this is just the idea of how noah is now, on this uh, section that we call files here, you can actually enter home.dat and actually see what is happening. When you double click, you see the actions are tied to it. And if you come here and you say, I want to do this to show file content. Okay, this is what I was looking for. So you can actually still see this widget tree that we have here. Now, 
if you want to test your application, you can just simply click here on play and you're going to see, uh, okay, select the home screen. We've not set a home screen for this our application. So let me set this home as our home. I think it's available down here that you can make home screen just like this. And this should be our home screen. We'll click on play. It should have our screen opened to us that we can test. So one beautiful thing is you can also just change like all the device in real time here, just like how Flutterflow has it. If you want Mac OS or whatever thing, you can change the device or Windows. You can change the device screen and make it in the dimension that you want to do so that you actually visualize it. I think this is also very good for screenshots. Again, this builder, you can actually change the size of this uh, page that I have here while you're building. Like you can resize it. That's what I mean. Like you can resize it like this to actually see how your application is going to to behave. Now, this is where you can connect things like your data source in NOAA. So you see here, you have this ability to connect your data sources and settings and configure your project. So if you click over here, you're going to see something like API. You can tie an API. You can tie with Superbase or Connect Firebase. Again, this is just like an overview of how um, this application works. And I think it's coming out very, very strong. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Flutterflow is dead? What's your idea? Are you going to be trying NOAA? And again, if you want me to do um, a detailed video of the interface and how to even build something, I can definitely try that out. Sorry about the recording. Electricity went out and I just had to continue. But yeah, that's just a brief overview. And do you think Flutterflow is dead? Let me know what you think down in the comment sections. And if you haven't already, please check out the channel, subscribe. I have links below if you want to reach out to me. If you have any questions or anything, thank you very much and see you around.